Marines and Sailors, Sergeant Major Barrett and I are here at Henderson Hall at Headquarters Marine Corps in Washington, D.C. A month ago, we spoke to you about sequestration and its impact on the Marine Corps. We promised to update you at that time as more information became available. Today's video is a continuation of our efforts to keep our Corps and its families as up-to-date as possible. Since the first video was released on 8 March, we have continued to work with Congress and the Department of Defense to secure the necessary resources to maintain our high state of readiness and to ensure that Marines are properly equipped and trained to answer the nation's call. Two weeks ago, Congress passed a budget that will fund the Department of Defense and the Marine Corps through September, the remainder of this fiscal year. The President has signed this bill into law. This budget allows our Corps to move forward for now, but it does not remove the cuts known as sequestration. Unless Congress changes the law, those deep sequestration cuts will be with us for the next nine years. Marines, the Commandant and I are proud that during this time of uncertainty, you've kept your heads focused on the mission. Many of your concerns to include opportunities for education, ammunition shortfalls, and other operational requirements have been funded through this September. We will continue to focus on maintaining our warfighting skills and our readiness. The Marine Corps will remain America's crisis response force. For our civilian Marines, the issue of furloughs is at the center of my concerns. The Department of Defense announced that furloughs will be reduced from 22 days to no more than 14 days throughout the remainder of this fiscal year. The very latest information that I have is that furlough notices have been delayed until early to mid-May with an effective date of mid to late June. I want you to know that our core senior leadership works this furlough matter daily in an effort to avoid it completely. The Sergeant Major and I realize the burden of uncertainty that this places on you and your families, as well as the effect it will have on the readiness of our Corps. I deeply regret that. Please know that we remain committed to you and will continue to work with DOD and leadership on this matter. You and your families are important to us, and your work is vital to our Corps. Our hard work with Congress addressed a number of shortfalls, but the road ahead requires every Marine to continue to conserve resources and remain disciplined warfighters. We need you to be conscious of every dollar the American public commits to keep you highly trained, educated, and prepared for crisis. Every Marine plays a vital role in our effort to remain faithful stewards of the taxpayer dollars that fund our Corps. The Commandant and I need you to stay focused on your mission and allow the senior leaders to guide our Corps through these troubled waters. Marines, the period of austerity has just begun. In fact, we can expect lean times for the foreseeable future. However, a number of our media concerns have been addressed. Our training plans for our ground and aviation units will continue as planned for the rest of this year. That said, I need each of you to be particularly judicious during the periods of training such that you squeeze every ounce of training value out of every dollar spent. Our UDPs and rotational special purpose MAGTAFs are funded this year as are the rest of our operating forces. Our depots at Cherry Point in Albany and Barstow will remain open and continue to induct battle-worn equipment. This alone will go a long ways in helping us reset our gear coming home from Afghanistan. You have my word that Sergeant Major Barrett and I will continue to keep faith with you and your families. As we promised before, we will continue to provide updates to you as new information becomes available. Until then, stay focused on your mission, Marines, and Semper Fidelis.